In today's video, thanks to the Home Depot Seed Program, we are looking at the Volvo VB 6000 SE water jet, or as we like to say in America, bidet. Actually in America, we love our toilets and don't know what to do with a bidet. Invented in France in the 1600s, bidets were a way of cleaning up after going to the bathroom, after menstruation, after sex. Over the century, the bidet has evolved. It is now popular in Asia, Europe, Latin America, but not in the USA where it's seen as kind of taboo because it's associated with sex, poop, and cleaning up. The purpose of the modern bidet is to spray water and clean your underside. So you can either buy a smart toilet, which can be really expensive, or you can go with something like this, where the electronics and the plumbing is part of the toilet seat and no modifications to the actual toilet are needed. That's where the Volvo water jet comes in. Unboxing reveals a complete set of everything you need to do the installation. It includes plastic parts for attaching the toilet seat to your toilet. A remote control because it is 2020 and everything comes with a remote control. Bracket and attachments for getting the seat onto your toilet. Plus various brackets and batteries are included. A hose and there's your, your T valve. There's a template to make sure that everything gets aligned properly for the correct fit because that's important and a manual plus a quick sheet and then the actual product itself which yes does include a power cord it's about four feet which may not be enough for some people because we generally don't tend to have outlets close to the toilet they tend to be closer to the vanity we're going to see if we need to do any adaptation with maybe an extension cord or something in our bathroom then you have the actual product itself. It's all plastic. It has an inlet valve for water. It has some manual controls on the side. Status that tells you whether there's power to it and whether it's in a power saving mode. On the flip side, the lid includes a little label telling you not to stand on it, not to use harsh chemicals to clean, and not to plug in with your hands all wet because it should be already plugged in before you go to use it. Anyway, um, the actual seat is just hard plastic, no cush here. Here is the outlet for air to dry your tush. This is the stainless steel water jet that will come out and spray your tush. And I believe the LED, the LED lighting is part of this. And then we have an attachment that's going to go back here that will mount to the toilet that this will secure to. As much as I would like to install the Volvo in this bathroom, I can't because there are no outlets here. The closest one is way over there and it's not recommended that you use an extension cord. So for this length, We'd actually would have to call an electrician, have an outlet installed somewhere over here. And that's just not practical for us. So let's go to bathroom number two. In the second bathroom, I've placed the Volvo just right on top of the toilet seat. So I can check to make sure that I do have enough cord to reach the nearest outlet. Besides checking for a nearby outlet, you want to make sure that if you have an elongated toilet seat, that the unit you buy is also elongated because they do make a round one, which of course would not fit here and vice versa. A few items you may need for this installation would include a towel, because when you disconnect that water line, you're gonna have some water in here that's gonna possibly come out. A crescent wrench to disconnect and reconnect. And I have two, but you'll probably can get away with one. Uh, maybe a pair of gloves to wear and some disinfectant wipes just to clean up the area that you're going to be working in. We're going to have to remove this toilet seat so you're going to get little 
hands on, it's just better to have it. You might as well clean the area as long as you're here, right? With the toilet wiped off, I'm ready to take off the toilet seat. And in my case, this is just going to be unlocking and it should come up just like that. Of course, depending on your toilet lid, you may have to go underneath and loosen some bolts. In my case, I'm also going to need a screwdriver because the Bemis uses this plastic system and you just unscrew these plugs and then that gives you back your original opening. So it's a great way of installing a toilet seat without any metal hardware so there's nothing to corrode. Just two pieces of plastic. So I'm going to loosen that one, take that one off, and then we're ready to get our bracket on board. By the way, I would save these parts and the seat in case at some point you want to reinstall that. Maybe you want to take the bidet with you or you want to uninstall it. So you may want to just put this in storage in case you need it in the future. With the seat and its associated parts removed, we're ready to turn off the water supply. And in my case, it's just one turn and it's done. Yours may be a screw. So now we're good with that. And then all we have to do is turn this lock. And yours may be a plastic one, which you can turn by hand or if it's metal, then you may need your crescent wrench to loosen that. Now we take our T-valve and the threaded portion that goes straight down will attach right there. And you'll twist that on and then this top part with this spinning ring, that'll attach right there. And if you want, you can put some Teflon tape on that, or you shouldn't have to because there's a compression ring in there, so we should be fine. And you don't want to put it on super tight, you just want it snug. Ideally, you want the front of the T facing forward. When you're done, this is what your connection will look like. Water line coming up to the T, have that T facing forward towards the bowl. And then you tighten that down. Right now it's all hand tightened. And if you need to, you can use a crescent wrench to snug up that top nut. Now we take the supplied hose and both ends are the same. We're just gonna plug into this T. And again, this is a toolless connection. You're just gonna go up snug. And for the moment, we're going to leave this alone, but that will eventually end up connecting to our new toilet lid. Fovo does include a template so that you can make alignment really easy. Place it on your toilet. Align the front end because that's where you want the seat. You don't want it to come over and you don't want it to be too short. So by using this template, and placing where you want the seat, we now have an idea where the bracket is going to sit so that it properly aligns. Oh, and by the way, on this bracket, it has a lip that goes up and a flat edge. You want the flat edge facing forward because the seat's going to slide over onto this. And there are two little rubber pieces on the back side. Make sure those are there. One of them came off during shipment. With our template, even with the front and the sides, we know that our plastic bracket is properly aligned. We put a metal bracket across with the sharp edge facing up. Then we take our fixing bolt and we drop it through just like that. And then on the other side, we're going to use this rubber plug and we're going to orientate it going up. Then a washer and then a fixing nut is going to secure it. And this is all being done by hand. Here's a look at the connection you just made for one side. 
and and for the other. And again, this is all hand tightened. Now we're gonna take our Volvo and you see these two grooves here? This is where this is gonna fit. So we're gonna take the toilet seat, set it down, and then just slide it in, into position. And hopefully we'll hear a click when it actually fully engages. Make sure the cord's out of the way so it doesn't fall into the bowl. It's a little hard to line it up only because there are no reference marks. So you sort of have to just feel the groove and line that up with the bracket edge on both sides. And once you can't lift up on either corner, then you know that you have it attached to the bracket. Then we just slide forward. And you heard that click. Our toilet seat is attached. Now we take that hose that we left laying around and we're going to connect it to this inlet. And again, it's another toolless connection. Just align it. Make sure you don't cross thread because it is plastic. So I usually just step back a little bit until I feel it fall in, then I start tightening. And again, just going to make it snug. And once we turn on the valve, then we'll check for leaks. And if we need to, we'll tighten a little further on any of the connections. And everything is dry. So I think we're good to go. All we have to do is plug this unit in. Upon plugging in, you'll hear some water flow. And that's water going into the reserve tank. Because remember, it can warm the water that touches your tush. So it needs to have a reserve for that. The way I ran power was I ran it underneath, behind the bowl, then I came up along the side and into the outlet. It's probably not the most beautiful looking thing. Ideally, you'd want to plug down there somewhere. But in our situation, without having to call an electrician and have a bunch of work done, we've succeeded in getting this installed. Installation time will probably take you 30 minutes or less. And the only tools we ended up using were the flashlight to light our way, a pair of gloves, the screwdriver, which had to do with taking off the old toilet seat. But for the installation, it was completely toolless. Opening the top lid, we see the instructions on what not to do, and you can probably peel that off. And there's a little sensor. It's built into the seat so it knows when you're sitting down. And that can be removed. While you can operate the unit with the controls on the side manually, it's best utilized with its remote. They give you three batteries, three AA batteries that you're gonna use. It comes with a mounting bracket. And then you pull off the back cover to install your three double A's. With the batteries installed, all you need to worry about is the mounting bracket. And you have two ways of attaching this to a wall. Double-sided tape or the included screws allow you to attach it. The only thing you have to do is decide where you are going to mount it. I'll probably be mounting the remote right here so it's handy for the user. One of the buttons here says LED light. And there it is. So you get a blue light and it shines up your bowl in case you need to see it at night. Though, yeah, I, I never mind. Anyway, another nice thing is that as you make adjustments, you get feedback. You can set the water temperature. You can set the water pressure. You can even set the seat temperature. So for those cold winter nights, when you go to sit down, you can sit in comfort. As far as where the remote needs to be, I'm going to try switching on the LED while facing it in the opposite direction. And if I flip the button, there's not only the LED coming on, there's a confirmation beep. So 
you don't have to have that sensor talking to that sensor being right next to each other. So I'm assuming that it's probably RF the way it's working. So now we have it installed. I'm going to test drive it. I won't show you that, but I'll tell you about it. This was my first time using a bidet. And let me tell you, it was quite a sensation when that nozzle came out and started shooting water up in my butt. I think it's going to take a little getting used to, just not something we've grown up with in America. So um, that's not to say I didn't eventually like it. It was just weird. I would definitely start with the lowest pressure setting just so you can get used to it. It was set on high, so it felt like it was just I was getting an enema and I didn't want that. Anyway, there's even a turbo mode, which supposedly kind of does that for you. For those of you still watching, a little bit of bonus material. Two things I want to let you know. One, I've now been using this for four days and I actually like it. As a matter of fact, there's some toilet paper that I instinctively reached for and didn't need because today I actually went through the process of using the electric dryer and it did its job. Now, mind you, things will be slower because if you're used to sitting down, doing your business, wiping and flushing, and you're out of there, the rinsing is longer and you have to manually control it. And the air drying is a slower process, probably a minute or so, but it all works. And I didn't end up using any toilet paper and probably cleaner than with using toilet, toilet paper. You might be thinking, great, but how do you actually use a bidet? Well, you sit down on it, you do your business as you normally would, and then you have a choice. You can either flush, or you can grab the remote control and tell it to wash you. While the spray is rinsing you, some people prefer to squirm, move around a little bit, and just work the spray in the entire area, but you don't have to because the spray is pretty thorough on its own. Once you've had enough rinsing, hit the stop button, then you can hit the dry button, or you can just opt to dry yourself with toilet paper. And at that point, you can flush everything. For women, there's a button that will actually get the front area and wash that for you. If you press the button twice, you'll get a pulsing wash. I didn't like that so much, but I guess with time you could get used to it. No need to worry that this will inadvertently go off and spray all over the floor because even if you purposely tell it to spray, it won't because the seat senses that no one's sitting there, so therefore it won't activate. And of course, don't forget to return the remote to the magnetic caddy. Thank you for watching and know that we don't allow commercials within our videos because we know those can be annoying. So please support us by leaving us a comment, giving us a thumbs up, and of course, hitting that subscribe button. And as always, thank you very much for watching and have a good bidet.